uh, we continue with our series of lectures and as I uh, promised to, to you yesterday, so today we will speak about uh, positivity of uh, magic functions and how to uh, prove it. So, Okay, good. Uh, so, so in our previous lectures, what we have done, we reduced the question about universal optimality of uh, uh, E8 lattice and Leach lattice to the following uh, positivity statement. So uh, <coughs> we constructed this function f tilde, and uh, we also shown that if this function is non-negative. Uh, for all uh, real uh, positive, real non-negative values of R, and for all uh, purely uh, so imaginary tau in the upper half plane. Uh, so if we could prove this inequality, then this would apply that the E8 lattice and the, the uh, Leach lattice are universally optimal. And so what is uh, what will be useful for us to to to, to uh, Tr trying to prove this statement is that uh, we also shown that uh, this function f tilde it has the following uh, integral representation, and so here, uh, so f, f tilde it's uh, this uh, so sine squared which will generate double zeros for the function f tilde, and the following uh, uh, integral uh, from zero to infinity of this uh, meromorphic. Fun function k, which is defined on a product of two upper half planes, and we have seen that this integral representation it uh, converges absolutely if tau is in the domain d and uh, imaginary axis it belongs to domain d, and also if uh, uh, r is uh, bigger than square root of two and zero minus two, and and zero it's a number which depends on dimension. So for dimension eight and zero is uh, one. And so this condition somehow just means that R has to be strictly positive, which, knows, which is actually fine uh, for us. It means that we can use this representation for all the purposes we want. And if dimension is 24, then what will happen is that this number n0 equals to 2, uh, which tells us, so it <coughs> means that the first possible uh, lens in the uh, Leach lattice is missing. We have no vectors of uh, lens square root of 2. And so this integral will, con will converge only if r is big enough. Again, here there should I made a typo. There should be a minus sign. So it makes somehow because if you have a minus sign uh, here, it is correctly should be. Then this will be a very fast decaying term, which will so, so to say compensate for poles of uh, k hat. And so. So this is just to recall what 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 were the meromorphic kernels we spoke about. So this kernel K hat it was a uh, com you defined it as a transformation of kernel K we worked uh, a lot with. So it's K is a function of two variables, for example tau and z, and we apply slash operator uh, in with respect to the first uh, variable. And uh, so also what we would be, so now what we would like to do, we would like to give an explicit formula for this kernels KD. And uh, as we discussed it in one of the previous lectures, it is convenient to, to split this kernel into two parts. So to say into a positive part and a negative uh, part. And this positive part and negative part, they are defined by the action of this involution S. And uh, so, so here are the explicit formulas for the uh, uh, kernels. So we will write them in the following uh, way. So we will. Uh, so here, this is a, a column vector which consists of these functions phi minus two, phi zero, phi two, and we defined these functions, I guess, in our second lecture. And those are the functions which generated the. A uh, ring of uh, uh, functions in the class P, which are annihilated by the ideal I, 
And so in the next slide, I will remind what these functions are. And this is also for fu uh, these are functions which generate uh, the uh, no, no, how to ring the module functions which are uh, eliminate the deal i till i so no, we had two ideals i plus and i minus so these are for ideal i plus these are for ideal uh, i plus tilde these are for ideal i minus and these are for the <coughs> ideal i minus tilde and so for for oh, each of these functions we have a concrete description I will show it to you in the next slide and what is here in the middle so in the middle we have a three by three matrix which I will also given in, in two slides from, from now. So here are the functions uh, phi 2, phi 0, phi minus 2. So they are, so to say, they come from the world of quasi-modular forms. Uh, so the fu functions psi, psi 4, psi 2, and psi 0, they are a mixture of uh, logarithms of lambda functions. So here are this mm, calligraphical uh, L, it's a logarithm of lambda function. And this is a logarithm of, uh, of the lambda function uh, acted by uh, matrix S, by linear fractional transformations. And so the functions, this xi4 and xi2, they are some uh, uh, usual modular forms uh, of weight 2 and 4 respectively. And uh, so they are modular forms for gamma 2. So it's, it's a set of functions, yeah. Yeah, so and here maybe I will write uh, down, so what are uh, u, v, and w, u, v, and w, they were the, so they were the force powers of theta functions. I think like this. And so there is one linear uh, relation between these uh, four functions. So one of them is the sum of two others. And those two functions, they actually generate the uh, ring of all modular forms of uh, uh, for the group gamma 2. And so uh, we also have this functions phi tilde and xi tilde and they are somehow they come from the same uh, world as their friends without tildes. So here again we have some expression which is in terms of quasi-modular forms and for psi, xi tilde we, we have again uh, modular forms of level 2 and the logarithms, uh, logarithm of lambda. And so, and now we come to the matrices. So the matrices, uh, we tried to write them in a, in a way which would be somehow, which couldn't go. So we have now four different matrices, two matrices for dimension eight and two matrices for dimension 24. And so we tried to write it in somehow a compact form. So here we introduced some uh, abbreviations for this. So what, uh, well, so here we take this, uh, how many? Okay, so, so this number number of uh, functions of weight starting from minus two to uh, thirteen, uh, and for from them we will construct uh, diagonal matrices. And now each so the each of the uh, the first matrix is defined like this. So, so it's a diagonal matrix times this particular matrix. So here we introduce this. Uh, notation for J invariant so that things look a bit nicer in, in inside of a matrix. And so this, uh, what we've got here, this will be, so to say, ma matrix where uh, objects, they will be holomorphic at the upper half plane and uh, possibly have poles at, uh, uh, at the cusp. So I think in, in this case, we don't know. In this case, we do have maybe w one cusp uh, at uh, infinity somewhere. And here we divide by the difference of J invariance, and this will give us uh, our poles uh, at the points where tau and z are, gum, are SL to z equivalent. And so similar representation we also write for uh, <coughs> this ma matrix which corresponds to the uh, so ma ma minus sign. 
so somehow uh, we tried to find some nice structure in these matrices which could give us a hint about positivity, but we were not able to, so maybe somebody else could, could do it later. And so here is what we have for dimension 24. So it's again, stru structure is uh, similar. So we have a product of three matrices. So this is a diagonal matrix. This is this matrix. And this is again a, a diagonal matrix. And so, sorry? Is there supposed to not be a J of tau minus J of Z in the denominator? Oh, yes, yes, maybe, okay, maybe it's, uh, I think it just disappeared some, somewhere. Yeah. Or maybe, okay, maybe, maybe it got absorbed somehow. No, no, probably not, no, no, probably not, no, no. Okay, yeah, 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 here there is uh, minus one, to, so it, it's already in, in here. Uh, yeah, so we see that, like, somehow in dimension 24, we have more poles. And well, after all, expression got a bit more complicated, but not uh, too much. And so now when we have these explicit expressions, uh, we can, what we, the next thing which we try to do is how to see the positivity of uh, the function we are interested in, and of uh, f, t f tilde, from some properties of our kernel k. And so again, just to we just we recall the integral representation here, and so if, if we see, for example, if we, uh, in those cases, okay, again, minus is missing, and again, in those cases, when this uh, integral converges absolutely, then, for example, just the positivity of k will imply the positivity of f. And for example, this happens in uh, dimension 8. With, uh, this is the only thing we have to check. And in dimension 24, we have additional uh, problem coming from the divergence in this integral. So we will need to work separately with the small values of r. And so, so here how we, what will we, what we do, we, how we address this problem in dimension 24. So here we use, so to say, a truncation. So it means that we are going to split our kernel, uh, k24, into two parts. So one of them, this uh, e hat, it will be a part which, so to say, contains the pole. And the remaining part will grow at most polynomially on the uh, imaginary axis. If so the second var variable on the imaginary axis goes to infinity. And so here are again the, here are the exp explicit expressions for the for this term which we have uh, which we are going to consider separately. And so now what we do we uh, set this parameter p, which was somehow chosen to make our numerics work better. And so now we, we split this integral into the following uh, two parts. It's the first into second integral from 0 to ah. Okay, so it's from 0 to infinity, but here we have kind of a just a bit a slightly tricky definition of, uh, ah, ah, of this part. So it's, uh, and so now the advantage of this is that the, uh, this uh, second uh, integral here, it can be evaluated explicitly. And so this is uh, what we what we get. So here we got uh, a pole of uh, second order, but you uh, re remember that we are also in our representation of uh, function f uh, tilde. We are also multiplying it by sine squared. So this pole it will be compensated by a factor of sine squared. And so. So now well, the positivity of f, we will deduce it from the following statements about uh, kernel to kernels, kernels k hat, uh, the kernel k truncated, and the remaining part. So first, uh, we show that the kernels itself, that they are positive, if tau is in the imaginary axis, the first variable is in the imaginary axis, and the second variable is also the imaginary axis. So now we should show the same for the truncated kernel. 
and we also estimate the this uh, uh, remaining term which comes from the in integration of a pole and so in this inequality it, it, it actually will be split into two simpler uh, inequalities which we can prove which we are going to prove separately and so Uh, now uh, somehow what we are going to do because uh, uh, our uh, now our function uh, functions which we are interested in they are all defined on the product of two uh, real half lines uh, but this is uh, the product of two half lines it's a non-compact uh, set and so uh, doing numerics on it um, might be not very uh, convenient and so what we have done, we have decided to, instead of uh, defining function on a product of two half lines, uh, to go to the, to consider a fun uh, function on a unit square. And so for this we will need to make a change of variables. And so this is change of variables which we will do. We will instead, we will take a modular lambda function, uh, which is a Haupt module for the group gamma 2 as our new parameter and the, so lambda it map maps the imaginary axis into interval 0 1 and so now what we have to do we, we have to express all these functions in terms of lambda if, uh, if our uh, variable in the upper half plane is actually in the uh, the imaginary axis and so for this, uh, well which functions we will use, use we will use, we'll need for this polynomials, also we will need a lo logarithm, because we had logarithm of lambda in our formulas. And now to express uh, the quasi-modular forms and the modular forms of higher weight, what we will need, we, we need to introduce the uh, elliptic integrals. Because the most classical fact that elliptic integrals, they invert uh, modular functions. And so here are the uh, elliptic integrals. So the elliptic integral of the first kind and the elliptic integral of second kind. And so here are the formulas which we uh, use to express all, all the functions in terms of la lambda. So with uh, curly L and curly L, calligraphical L as it's easy, it, it was just equal to the logarithm by definition. So we only somehow check that the uh, branches of the logarithm we are u using here is the, stand is the right the right ones, and it's it is the case. Uh, so now for the uh, modular forms, we have expressions like this. So they can be expressed in terms of uh, a square of this uh, elliptic integral of a first kind. Now. In some of the formulas, we, we, we also use the just the variable on the upper half plane, and so now it also can be expressed expressed in terms of k. In this way, and here we have a formula for the uh, quasi-modular form e2. And now, after we have done all this, so. We can make a substitution, so now we have, we can compute two functions, well not two functions actually, they are three functions, so functions L, L, LD and L truncated, uh, such that uh, K of tau Z it's, uh, uh, equals to L evaluated at the lambda of tau and lambda of Z. And so we want this identity to be again valid if the real parts of tau and z vanish. And so now we'll get well, all these expressions and then they can be so expressed in terms of these functions. In terms of uh, like for functions x, logarithm of x, logarithms of 1, one minus x, the elliptic integral e, elliptic integral k, and elliptic integral k of 1 minus x. And so I think also like in, there is some uh, slightly like technicality with this truncated kernel because uh, here we have uh, exponential to the power x, so it will be, yeah, so it will, we will get some 
or rather unpleasant term, something like exponential to the expression in terms of, uh, uh, of elliptic integrals. So, but then, but then that one we estimated uh, separately. And so now let me show you how, now, how these expressions look like, how, how long they will be if we express them in terms of this, uh, so to say, easy parts. So here is a Mathematica code for okay, uh, so here it's a typo here should be sorry uh, L8 so the function L8 so it is a kind of uh, lengthy but maybe not not too big so and so here is the plot of this function. And so on a plot, you can see that it, uh, yeah, somehow, on one hand, just by eye, we can see it seems like it is positive. Uh, on the other hand, it's maybe not, not exactly easy to see that because uh, uh, on the boundaries here, our uh, function, it actually vanishes. So it vanishes on these borders and it uh, goes to infinity at, at this edge. Also, we see that here on the diagonals, we have, so to say, uh, virtual singularities. So the function itself is smooth there, but because we had to decide by the difference of j invariants, so the computer does not know how to evaluate the function here, so it leaves the uh, diagonals blank for us. And so, on the next uh, slide we have, uh, so this is it, uh, um, here we show how, wh what is the growth of functions at the edges. Uh, so here, as, as we have seen it uh, before, so, so here, so what, what, what maybe I explain a little bit what it means. So it means that this is, so to say, the order of vanishing, and it is also, for example, here, if it's uh, going to y equals to, at this edge it's y equals to 1. And asymptotically, it means that here our function, uh, it will look like uh, a logarithm of 1 minus y times some uh, coefficient which uh, still depends on x. But we, we simply don't write it uh, at this picture. And so we see that uh, somehow here we have uh, vanishing, here we have vanishing, and here we have uh, actually uh, growth. And so, so now what we do somehow, we, as, we, as I told you, if we could not find a way how to prove the inequalities which I showed you before by some simple mathematical argument. So what we do instead, we do, we do a computer computations, but we also try to make them like a mathematically ri rigorous. Uh, so in a sense that w when we com compute value of a function at some point, so we can do it just so say using. So if we, ha if we have two numbers which we know exactly, then we can use rational arithmetic and do some operations with them. For example, like two times two multiplied by four, and this is mathematically rigorous statement. On the other hand, you can you can write your numbers in decimal representation. And this is how it will look like then. And this is often what people somehow see when we are using, uh, making some computations on the computer. This is what we get. However, in reality, what this really means, often if you have this like something dot something, it is not that this number is exactly the r rational r number represented with this decimal representation. Usually it means that we simply don't know what goes after the dot or we somehow, or we don't really want to know what it is, we know that it's something not important for us. And it works quite uh, good for many uh, practical purposes. Uh, so there are practical purposes for which this does not work that well, and uh, I think like 50 years ago people realized this, that maybe it's b better to have not only a representation like uh, this, but actually knowing, so what happens if we know two numbers approximately, then there, for example, if we multiply them, then they, we will also know the result only approximately, and the error will also accumulate. And so for this, we, what we can use is something what is called interval arithmetic. So suppose we, we can, like other way to interpret this 
uh, equation here is that we know that we have some quantity which is 2 plus some error. And then we'll multiply it by something else which is also 2 plus, er plus an error. Or what we can do, we can say know that like our first number lies in this interval and our second number lies in this interval. And then if we multiply them, we obtain something which lies in this interval. Yeah, it's better to write 2, two plus minus 1 half. Mm. Avoid dots in the last line at all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 Otherwise, it's another, Otherwise it's another, another connection. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, so here, for example, if we know our like numbers with precision like this, then we know the product. We know that our product will lie in some interval like this. And so, interval arithmetic it's attempt to to do the computations in this consistent way when we uh, know, know all our uh, variables with some precision, then we say that the result belongs also to some interval. So here we could write this interval explicitly. And in some situations, of course, even the, because evaluation is not so easy, we will just give here some interval which definitely contains the result and we are sh sh rigorously sure about that. And so nowadays there are actually quite many packages where this is uh, implemented. For example, if such packages exist inside of uh, Mathematica. So for, for our computations here, we, we have used Mathematica. And so also, as you've, as you've seen on the plot, uh, so with our fun function, it's not a, somehow no, it's not an easy function. It has all those. Uh, how peculiarities, it, it, it has uh, problematic behavior, oh sorry, uh, problematic behavior here at the edges and it has this like virtual problem at the diagonal where like in the diagonal of course this function is smooth but if you want to compute it we have to, we cannot just compute it by dividing uh, zero by zero, we have to, to, to do something. Sorry? Lipitaly Yeah, something, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that, but st but still we have to do it. It's well, mathematically, yeah, it could be some legal issues because it's not public domain, maybe you should use Sage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, but guys, we, we, we used licensed version. <laughs> yeah, but also, we don't know what's, what happens inside this. So it's, really <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> it's not really proof, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I will speak about like, this maybe a bit later. And so, so, so but it, yeah, so like one nice thing about commercial products is that usually they are made to be liked by people. So, <laughs> so if you use it, it's very convenient and easy. But actually, so Henry Cohn and Abhinav Kumar, they did work on uh, ri writing at least some of our, of this, our procedures in Sage also. And yeah. I think in Sage writing uh, or maybe working is it sometimes is more difficult. But what we discovered that it was somehow it worked actually much faster. Because like one maybe like one reason for that is that now like writing it for second times, so we are more experienced and can introduce some maybe better uh, procedures. But also it worked faster. And so, uh, so again like the pr problematic points which we had. So they were like diagonals, and like, like the point where two diagonals intersect. It's like using L'Hopital rule rule twice. And uh, so we also have to do something about uh, edges. And maybe like most unpleasant points, there are these small corners. Where because like here we have, so to say, three different singularities intersect, like two edges and also one diagonal. So that they require to like somehow most, most work. And so here is the picture of like all, so all this, each of these regions, it was uh, 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 positivity on it was checked by different uh, program. And so then what I can tell you also the running times of the uh, program. So look, as I said, like all the computations, they were made of Mathematica. And here are some technical details about the uh, computers. So these, these computers were, uh, these computations were run by Steven Miller in uh, Rutgers. And so he used uh, somehow maybe it's like used 16 cores to run Mathematica on it. And so here we had like some small uh, files to which uh, run pretty quickly. So we had uh, to write down our like, 
own estimates for elliptic integrals, so some symbolic computations with kernels, symbolic computations with, the, so this is like dealing with the, doing some parts of the truncation argument work. And so here what, how it looks in dimension eight. So in dimension eight, actually everything uh, runs pretty fast. Yeah, so it is somehow maybe uh, everything will add up to a few hours. So maybe this, this one was, seems like this is the longest thing. So it also turns out that uh, for checking uh, numerically, uh, the longest was actually checking generic points. You know, like algorithms which we had to run, which ran on the singularities, they run pretty fast. But for generic points, for, for some reason, it was actually long, longer to check, to check them. And for dimension uh, 24 here, the running times are uh, much uh, longer. So here it already adds up like to, to a few, like for example, this part adds up to a few days. And so also for dimension 24, we also need to consider those uh, small values of R separately. And so, for f so these are the running times of programs which deal with uh, uh, with the trun truncated part of the kernel. And so, maybe you have some questions. You didn't insist on interval arithmetic. Sorry. If you didn't insist on interval arithmetic, you want a non-rigorous computation, could you do it much faster? Oh, I mean, okay, I, I've, so, so the, I don't know, like, it, it depends on how unrigorous you want to be, so like, so like, uh, I don't know, like, this plot, it computes it, like, in two seconds. Yeah, yeah, but that, okay, but then, like, here, like, problems happen if you, I mean, here, probably, like, one thing which is necessary is still to check that everything is fine on the, in this pro on the singularities, uh, because like if you really try to rescale it and to come closer to the edge, usually plot will show something very bad. It, it, it will not look like it's positive. It will look like it. It will show the noise. But it looked like the computations at the boundaries were much faster than the. Yeah. So this is also okay. So it could it could be that something could be implemented in a more efficient way, or I don't know. Or maybe there is some fundamental reason for for that, because actually, like if from from things which we computed, actually, like do doing, for example, tail, because at the probably it's because at the boundary we have to somehow work harder, do more mathematics, and mathematics somehow speeds up computation. So we have to compute Taylor series, actually do more like uh, more estimates. And at those generic points, we are just lazy. We just take the existing program and just. It should should be much faster in principle. In, in principle, yes. Because, like you said, the the <laughs> hardest part, mathematically, was the or most painful part was the corners where. Yes, yes, yeah, but the, but then probably we, we then there there we did all the work for. I mean, yeah, Ste actually, Ste Stephen did all the work for yeah. the computer. Taylor expansion here at some first few terms or some. Yeah. It shouldn't be hard to get. Yeah, yeah, it should. Yeah. Well, like painful. That's why I said painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like you know, if, if the method is ta already tailored for the for the boundary, then somehow it's sometimes it's difficult to extend it uh, yeah, far, far, further. It's, uh, it's supposed to uh, for us not to think. Yeah, just yeah, 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 so that, that's that's certainly the, the danger. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try alternative hardware just to be sure? Uh, no. Yes, yeah, so I, th I think actually so. Henry Kohn was also r running these programs uh, in independently from uh, Steven and also getting the most similar re results. So is, is, there, is it possible to write programs to check the results of the computations? And then, I don't know, and then write another programs to check <laughs> the results as well. So. I will do computations, so it works to recompute the functions and all that. Yeah. Yeah, so here, so here, I don't know. To put no, something, I think it's pure for, then it's for security, you write something else to check uh, the result. Yeah, and this maybe, this maybe it's more like I don't know. It sounds like more like I don't know statistical physics. We're sure that this is true by like zero nine 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 percent. So I think this maybe can like 
increase your security in the result, but probably mathematically it cannot prove it anyways, because if you, if you don't believe in, like in the first program, then maybe your second problem, the program is also corrupted, or your second computer is also defective. So, yeah, and of course, somehow it would be very nice to have also a theoretical proof of this positivity. But at the moment, we have no idea how, like whether it's how to achieve that, or, or maybe like, is, even I is there any good theoretical reason for it to be positive? So maybe it is just positive by accident, so to say. So maybe have some more questions. Do you have a um, theoretical way to remove the singularity, a factorization that can remove singularity at the diagonals? Okay, I tried. I tried to do it, but guess okay, so maybe what I can. So like r r writing in some kind of like like an al al algebraic way, right? To divide divide by something. So I, I tried to do that, but not maybe not for very uh, long time, and not very. So you can see like this kind of a big expression, and then if you try try doing some kind of elimination of uh, uh, variables or uh, it actually it gets much 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 bigger probably if you if you ever like, w worked with uh, you know because like it effectively if you have I worked with it it had like it's a function with uh, uh, like al like algebraically independent many many variables and so at the end I got like some really really huge result which I sort of certainly could not handle by hand and so I'll it again would be a computer computation only instead of maybe instead of computing this like this interval arithmetic it would be computing huge symbolic expressions so I c somehow it, it, it looked to me that it would take also very long time because somehow like it is here we really like especially try to write our expression more more, more compact so it is small but if you try to do any kind of elimination then this expression just it grows extremely, extremely fast. So did you do try to type it in left? Yeah, it was in left <laughs> yeah, so it's like, yeah, so in left like the... the it's kind of but yeah, I mean, like in, in this, in this uh, so I, I tried to, for example, I know, rename the variables and see if it's some nice function, but it didn't look like a nice function. It's just like uh, some, you know, some like big, big polynomial in, I don't know how many it was, like uh, 10, no, not 10. It was this brackets yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but the like, brackets, they, may, they you know, make after all expression a bit sm smaller. <laughs> yeah, so I tried to write it down as an expression of like of this, uh, of this, how many they are, like one, two, three, four, five, six, like 12 variables, but uh, I could not see any particularly good structure in it. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, like, so I think here either there should be some very like good, good new idea why positivity should hold or or probably uh, any other method seems to be not much, uh, like not, not more rigorous or much more elegant than the one we, we are already using here. So, oh, not actually have a stupid suggestion. This fun uh, function looks like it doesn't have minimum, yeah. Okay, so minimum is like z on zero. The boundary, yeah. On the okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's maybe you can prove that it's positive, just solve the equation for critical point. Mm, yeah. Maybe, maybe, but, uh, <laughs> yes, but how, yes. how, how, how would this imply positive? Ah, because you know, it's, uh, it, it, is there no fun type of minimum of the function? Mm -hmm. If you, if you find, because it seems that there's no critical point uh, mm. inside, inside this, the, the square. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yes, so I think it might have no critical point. No, no, okay. If you need to find minimum on the boundary. Yeah, oh, no, no I think it's, yeah. no, it looks, it doesn't have no critical point at all inside here. Yeah, so I, thi I think, like, I mean, 
Okay, so maybe like, bound, like uh, the boundary is because of this like logarithm, I think it. Yeah, but I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Like can, can boundary count as a critical? No, 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 just inside. I have any minimum on that, I think it will prove that this guy. Yeah, no. It will be just one. Yeah, maybe, but then how also, how, yeah, maybe some other way to, yeah. to try it, because, yeah. yeah. And, and like there, there is it's something to, it's maybe some simplification of the equation for critical points. Mm -hmm. It will get some equation for uh, these colonomic functions, mm -hmm. which is easy to. Yeah, it's actually will be easy. I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah. yeah, maybe maybe we can try that one. <laughs> yeah, we. <maybe. laughs> yeah, well, like, oh, theoretical proof would be would be nice. On the model, are you derivating a few times your expression in order to get the positivity? Um, so on the okay, so on the on which boundary on, on here? The on the benching. No, so like so here, we have what we do, we kind of just compute what the limit uh, is, so to say, that like compute the expansion, for example, in uh, like here, if we take, for example, I don't know, x going to zero, where it could be maybe this would be like this one, for example, x. No, no, it's not. Okay, so here x going to zero. So we just find an expansion in terms of x, look at the first term and see, th and like that first term and the expansion, it will be some um, explicit function again, given in terms of, and then check whether this function is positive. Yeah. And also bound the, bound the rest. Yeah, so here like at the boundary, it's not exactly Taylor expansion because here we have, so we have also like logarithmic terms, so it's like this. No, actually what I said is I think it would work here because it's, it calculates this gra it's gradient and mm -hmm. it checks the gradient is positive, but as normal gradient is positive everywhere. Mm -hmm. is it, yeah, it's, it's good. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But you need to check something on the boundary too. No. No, I don't have to check anything. No, I have to check this function is kind of uh, with, uh, bounded below. Yeah. And to the boundary takes value zero zero infinity. Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean yeah. I don't have. Ah, so on boundary is zero. Yeah. yeah, on the boundary now it's equal to zero. It can continue yeah. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay, probably for this one needs some 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 time has to be in it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's difficult to do it just like this. Yeah. Yeah. Good, then probably we make a break. So the function you are showing depends on your truncation parameter? Mm. Okay, so the one function I showed it was for dimension 8, so it did not depend on a truncation parameter. Because like in dimension 8 we didn't have a truncation parameter. Yeah, and it did okay, so I just turned off the computer, but yeah, in principle I also could have, okay, for, like from picture from the uh, Functions I have, I've chosen to show one, but I, I, I also make pictures of four. So, <coughs> for 24 dimensional kernel, but somehow it looked very similar to this one, so I thought maybe yeah. it will be not so <laughs> interesting to show. Yeah, so actually, like we do have like these three different essentially things. So, this, like, like this kernel for dimension, like full kernel for dimension eight, full kernel for dimension twenty-four, and also this truncated kernel for dimension uh, twenty-four. Uh, but all they look more or less like like this. So. Yeah, so for dimension twenty-four, what we did, we proved uh, uh, inequalities for the like kernel itself, which was like without truncation, without modification. And there, there was like an, uh, another program which was running for the truncated part, like kernel without, uh, without this like first pole. And the pole was also handled uh, separately. But, but actually, like, considering pole, it was much faster because it was essentially like a function in one variable, so it's easier to, because it depended on this variable z in a very simple way. I have another question. Is it possible that, oh, I don't remember x, x and y, but the, let's say the, the uh, boundary where it goes to infinity is x equals 1, y equals 1. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible that if you fix, for example, uh, x and you increase y, that mm -hmm. the derivative is positive everywhere, as in the function is increasing 
from uh, the bottom boundary to the top? Uh, so we did not check. I don't know. I, I, this I don't. I'm not so sure, sure about that. I'm not, I'm not sure if it is actually if it is monotonic everywhere because it looked like it had some kind of like. Well, that's a turnaround, yeah. so yeah. to speak, going from one yeah. boundary word zero to the other boundary word yeah. zero. But I'm just wondering if you go vertical. Yeah, I'm not so not so sure about that. You know, so like also like one thing we look at least like with the presentation we have now if you take some kind of like for example derivatives of uh, this function then expression also gets more and more complicated so I maybe mean, like this was the reason why we did not fight on derivatives but yeah, tried to address the function itself mm. Yeah, so maybe maybe the second part will be a bit uh, sh shorter because I, I ran out of slides earlier than I expected. <laughs> but that's the almost always situation with slides. And uh, yeah, so maybe now I, I will speak a, a bit more about some uh, implications of this uh, result if we do believe in this in our computer uh, com computation and. Believing in universal optimality, then what kind of uh, consequences will it will it have? And so, like well, well, maybe one interesting question is the uniqueness of uh, optimal configurations. So, <coughs> so suppose that we have some uh, uh, optimization problem, and so like f would be some. So like maybe not f, maybe g be, be a completely monotonic potential. And suppose that we have some, so what we have already proven, so from universal optimality, it means that if we take any point configuration C, then its energy will be at least the same as the energy of lambda D. For any configuration C in RD. But now the question is what if we have equality here? Would this mean that uh, C is, uh, uh, the configuration C is isomorphic to our lattice? Even in case of inequalities, can you say anything about the C's contained in lambda D or lambda D? No, no, it's a bit of shift. Oh. It could be rotation, yeah. Yeah, it could be a shift, could be a rotation, yeah. And so the answer is uh, uh, yes. And so, the and so why it happens, so we can, for, for this we can remember how we proved uh, the Con uh, the uh, uh, con Kumar bound. So you remember that we had uh, our function. We had uh, this function. Uh, so 
so now we know that there exists a function so fg uh, such that we know that uh, uh, so fg is, is bounded by g that its Fourier transform is non-negative and also that Oh, yes, lambda D, thank you. And that also we have the correct. So what we need is that uh, the condition about this so O times. Zero minus f of zero. This has to be the energy of of the lattice. <coughs> and so now, if you remember the proof of. Uh, uh of the uh, linear prob prob programming bound by uh, Kohn and Kumar. What is rho here? It's density which uh, you perceive. OK, so rho one. is uh, one. OK, so one. So maybe the one important. And so this way, right? So like, so rho of, so it's a two. What we have to do? We have to also fix the density, of course, of our configuration. So on the from the proof of the theorem of Kohn Kumar we will see uh, linear programming bound it will uh, tell us that uh, for each so the only so the set of all Euclidean lenses of elements in this configuration C, it has to be contained in inside of the you mean distances, dist uh, distances between like x and zero. zero. Uh, okay, no, 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 no. You're right. You're, you're right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. This, yes. Right, because we don't, yeah, it's not a lattice, so we don't have, thank you. Yeah. So, so the set of uh, possible distances, it has to coincide with the set of possible distances between uh, elements in our lattice. And this happened because we, when we proved the universal optimality of uh, lam <coughs> of la la lambda d, we uh, okay. uh, we split this energy as a as a uh, we, 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 we wrote an, uh, written an estimate for c, and that estimate it would be uh, uh, sharp if and only if. Uh, this condition holds. So, okay, so maybe, so maybe here one thing. So maybe, maybe it's not for. Okay, so here an important thing is that. Okay, so we would have. So. So if we have our uh, potential uh, G. Which goes like, okay, uh, like this. So this was like potential g, and this was the function uh, f of g. Uh, 
Uh, so now the uniqueness that uh, will be true if uh, uh, what we need is that g equals to f of g only only for points r in this so to say in the set of possible lenses of two elements of our lattice. And for example, we know that uh, uh, this will be true for if G is, for example, a Gaussian. Because in that case, we have an ex explicit uh, for formula for uh, Fg and and we know that we have equalities only on our uh, on square roots of even integers. So this one square root of okay. and so on. The pure sphere packing is kind of step function. Yeah, it's completely in case. Sorry. Uh, pure Sphere packing? Yes. Step, 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 step function, okay, so probably the step function, maybe something like step function, but which is also uh, somehow infinity at the oh, yeah. here, here. So the prob probably step, step function would also work, but step function somehow it's, it does not uh, belong to this. Uh, to it's not completely monotonic, so it has to be. So for the sphere packing, the problem, the function has to be something like this. So like here, have this maybe R0. The packing radius here, we have 0, but here we have kind of. A infinity. And then one could argue that this is a completely monotonic function. So this and so and so as long as we have this uh, condition satisfied, uh, then we see that we always have the, also have the uniqueness. And so uniqueness, it's somehow it's argumented, uh, it's where I seen it well first, it was a paper of uh, Kohn and Elkis. So now if we have some point configuration and it's uh, a s set of possible distances is the same as a set of possible distances uh, of, uh, our, of one of our two lattices, then these two sets, they have to be, uh, and, uh, and then both sets have the same uh, density, of course. Then these two, uh, and I think also what we have to assume here that C is uh, periodic, uh, otherwise it's difficult to speak about uh, isometry, because for example, we could take a lattice and take one, by one point, and this does not change the energy. However, it's not the same configuration anymore. So we we should assume that C is periodic, so now assume. So that the density of C is one, and that the set of uh, pairwise distances in C, it will be the same as the set of pairwise distances in our lattice. So what is the definition of uh, periodic configuration? So it means that there exists some lattice such that like, C shifted by this lattice is a for some lattice. Do you want equal set of distances or inclusion? Uh, yes, I think even inclusion suffices. So then we claim that uh, C has to be uh, isometric to, to one of our lattices. Uh, 
And so how do we do it? So first we see that like this set, it has somehow like very special uh, arithmetic structure. So it is, uh, it's just will be the set of all square roots of even integers for integers bigger or equal than n0, right? And so for example, it means that uh, the distance squared between any two points, it's always uh, e even integer. And so here's a simple uh, Algebraic claim is that now we take, if we take, if we fix one point, for example, x zero, and so and compute a scalar product like like this. Okay, no, no. Like fix. with the elements of C. Then we know that uh, the uh, scalar product like this, it always has to be an uh, integer. Just because if we know somehow, if we know the distances between points, then we also know the uh, scalar products between them. And so this is a usual, uh, there is, uh, I forgot the name of the formula which expresses. Oh yeah, polarization formula, right. And so now we see that we fix these mm, points and all the uh, points x0, for example, and we tr translate our uh, set so that this x0, for example, coincides with uh, 0. So we got uh, some set of mm, mm, points uh, such that they are, uh, all, all the scalar products between them are integers. And so now the claim here is that the set, so the, the so the linear span of the following set, like c minus x zero, it has to be is an integer lattice. Integral this integral it is. Maybe even, yeah. It's oh yes, even yes, it's an even so. Uh, yeah, so that means that somehow even uh, so. yeah, there is some so it will be an even lattice. Sorry? As a quadratic lattice. No, no e even so, even so lattice like it like actually means that so, but so it's uh, definition is like lambda is the lattice. Is even if first either norm of L squared is always an even number for all elements in lambda or equivalently it means that the scalar product of two lattices uh, has to be an integer for all so the no no uh, even means that you have in the basis matrix, symmetric matrix, which is even numbers on diagonal, second mean just matrix. Yeah, but this, but this will mean that you have so. No, no, it's like equivalent. Yeah, it's second one. Second one. Not, not, not equivalent. Second one. 
Oh, it's not good, it's exactly the difference between the two. No, I think I think you just remove it, yeah. Yeah, maybe you know it. Okay, no, no, it's equivalent to saying that it's... So, yeah, all right, so one implies another, but not... And so it, it has to be an uh, uh, even lattice, and so now... Also, we know that if it's an... Uh, so, the, so let's denote, let lambda c be the... Uh, and I think it's... Uh, yeah, so, for, so from this condition, <coughs> uh, so let, so, so, okay, so let maybe like lambda prime be the lattice, which is spanned by by c minus x0, yes? Should that have also density determinant one? Yeah, yeah, so this is what I was going to say, that now because we know that somehow we know that c minus x0 is contained inside of lambda prime. So this means that uh, the uh, density of lambda prime is at least one. On the other hand, uh, because it's an uh, even lattice, it cannot have uh, higher density. So from here we see that so, so if lambda, lambda prime is even, it will actually mean that the density of you know, delta we denoted by rho, right? So rho of lambda prime is also bounded by one. And so we see that uh, C is contained inside of lambda, they have the same density, and now since we assume that C was also periodic, the only way those two sets can have the same density if they are equal. So now we, so the, so the, C is periodic, C is inside of lambda and C is periodic. means that c is just equals to lambda prime. So this way we can see that c is an uh, even unimodular lattice. And uh, so in dimension 8 we know that there is only one even unimodular la lattice up to isomorphism and it is the lattice E8. And in dimension 24 we have 24 different lattices like this. But uh, only one of them uh, has uh, the same uh, set of uh, pairwise distances as Leech lattice, where the first, where, where the square root of two is omitted, because all, all other uh, they are called Niemeyer lattices, and all they will contain uh, vectors of uh, length square root of two. So this gives us the. Uh, uniqueness of, uh, of, of so, so solutions of, of these optimization problems. So we know that if some configurations, some periodic configuration solves this problem, then it has to be isometric to the Leach lattice or E8 lattice. Sorry, I think I'm missing something. The assumption that C is periodic seems to have only been used the end to conclude it's equal to lambda. Is that correct? or? Mm, yes. Well, I can assume C is periodic. I get that C is inside uh, even unimodular lattice of, dimen of dimension D <coughs> with density, like the difference having density zero. Uh, yes, I guess. I guess so. Yes. Okay. So uh, this also implies that any such C is this. You just take, for example, the E8 lattice and you remove some density zero subset. Is that correct? Up to translation isometry is squared. Yeah, pro prob probably you are uh, right, even though okay, so I maybe have to. F yeah, I, yeah, I think it's I think it's right. Yeah. 
And so maybe one more uh, application of uh, the theorem is the now What we can do, we can look not only at the this, uh, Schwartz potentials, but also, for example, to uh, uh, power laws. And in particular, if we look not, not at all configurations, but only concentrate at the lattices, uh, this result is also gives some, uh, uh, can, can be applied to the optimality of uh, Epstein a zeta function among, among lattices. So, so now what we can do, we can also so write that now that among all lattices. Lambda in Rd with determinant one. So the minimum value of of the Epstein uh, zeta function. So I just recall the definition. It's uh, sum over lattice points without zero and we take the length of a point and take it to the power minus 2s. So to the Epstein zeta function For if our parameter s is between zero and infinity, yes. Are you aware of a continuation? Uh, uh, yes, yes. So, so we, we will do the analytic uh, continuation as well. So. so is achieved. And so, yeah, so we can uh, extend, so somehow it's, uh, so the, 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 it's more or less straightforward to obtain this where the Epstein uh, zeta function converges. It just follows from universal optimality. And now for the analytic continuation, what we do, we can use the functional equation. And so obtain it uh, also for s uh, in this range from zero to infinity. Uh, because the some of the uh, value of uh, this factor in the functional equation, it will be positive, so things will be fine. And then actually for if s is uh, negative, there are something interesting, because there the sign of the factor is not uh, constant anymore, it's either positive or negative. So in some cases it will be somehow uh, maximum, in the other cases it will be a minimum. And also uh, like one interesting thing is that We also can say something about, so of course this, this uh, zeta function, it, it has a pole at uh, uh, d divided by 2. But here we can uh, still uh, normalize the value of our function at this uh, pole. For example, subtract the, uh, the, the pole fr fr from it. And then we will get what is called the height of a torus defined by this lattice. So, and so also the if we take the height of and so the height is defined in the following way. So it so it will be some constant which depends only on d. And because it's constant, it's, it's not so interesting for us right now. And the following limit
and so <clears throat> and so this height is the sm smallest high so then so it is the uh, smallest among 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 all d dimensional flat tori of volume 1 Is the same as the log regular sum of logarithm of lengths? Uh, well, uh, probably. You take sum of uh, lengths six to the power minus distance? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, in this sense, it will be. Yeah. Can yeah, make three transforms in two. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is CD? What is it? It's so it's a constant which depends on dimension. Yeah, but it was it was it was definition. Great, after definition, I don't know what it is. Yeah. But it was a, it was a question to us, but we can answer it. Yeah. And so, like something what uh, Henry Kohn observed is that uh, here in the for this, uh, if we the opt optimality for the Epstein zeta function, it also uh, somehow implies here we also have uniqueness. So the only optimizer will be the uh, eight lattice or the Leach lattice. And so, and the uniqueness, and it will follow from the following formula. So we can write the following integral representation for. Zeta function And from here, because we already know that uh, our lattices, they are optimal for the values of theta function. Because of the value of theta function, it will be just the uh, Gaussian energy of lattice. Okay, uh, with maybe with a uh, so like theta function minus, minus 1, which is value at 1, this will be the normalized uh, Ga Gaussian energy. So and, and here we know that we have uh, so that uh, our lattices lambda d they are unique optimizers, and so from here we see that for uh, for the values of Epstein zeta function we also have the uniqueness. And so maybe for that, maybe you have some more qu qu questions? I have a question. Uh, one of the first lecture you mentioned that this six-dimensional representation is a polynomial growth and mm. should be useful. Mm. Uh, can you uh, for say something about this polynomial growth for the function? Uh, is it an interesting story or mm. Yeah, so, like, so like this, this story, this is how, how, where we use it, uh, we used it to prove the interpolation formula and to prove all the, uh, uh, all the bounds. So, 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 so I, so I decided somehow, like, it's, uh, no, interesting or not, but so, like, here maybe I decided to omit that part because it's, it was a bit technical, but maybe, maybe, maybe I can speak about this more tomorrow if it is. It's, it's, it is interesting. Ah, so the depression form is not yet proven in the sense, yeah, yeah. It, 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 
not listen to your lecture. You yeah, said so my, okay, so my lecture, this was the part which I uh, did, did not yeah. did not it's do. It's not necessary for me. Yeah, so, like, so it's not f necessary for... Uh, Uh, for the universal optimality, so it's, um, it's important for interpo inter interpolation formula. And um, well, like it assures uh, that the this uh, inter in in functions on the inter interpolating basis, if we fix a point and uh, the, for example, make the index grow, what we want to know, we want to know that, for example, these values they will grow at most polynomially. And uh, so the, the, this is where where, where we use it. No, but um, I probably have a bit more time than I expected, and I can speak about it uh, uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh, and uh, so today, maybe I wanted to speak about more like so. Like some m many people ask the question: So, what is so uh, special about dimensions eight and twenty-four? So maybe like at the remaining half an hour, I will try to speculate about this. So what is what is special about? Uh, Eight and And so, so here, like in this, so, and so I don't have a simple answer to this question. So I st it's still not clear why, uh, somehow, uh, so w what, w what are the pr particular properties of these numbers which are important. Uh, but what we observe are the following two phenomena which seem to be quite special to these two dimensions. So first is that the energy minimization so it can be solved by the linear programming and so rather by, so say by, by a concrete a linear programming bound which I explained before and th this seems to be special to these dimensions, maybe also including uh, one and two. And second, also property is that the uh, solution of linear program has so it has particularly nice structure. So that in this case we were able to somehow, for example, give an explicit formula for this solution, which probably would not work in general. And so, yes. In other dimensions, it is possible to have some lattices which are not minimizing but extremizing functional. Because it kind of like derivative is zero, but it's not. I, f I it think it. I think it might be. I, th I, th I think there are some results like this. Yeah, so it would be external point. Yeah, kind of derivatives. Is, you know, yeah. 
yeah, I, I think actually th 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 there are some r r results of that kind. Maybe maybe not for all lettuces, but maybe like for for example for shells of uh, let lettuces. Yeah, so there are, there are things called perfect lettuces. I think they have some mi might have some properties like that. <laughs> and so, and so here is maybe we'll first speak about the first, like why? So why, why do we why we don't expect that energy minimization will be solved by this method in general? So uh, why there is something unusual which happens here, and for this I will somehow introduce a, a new definition. And so what we are going to do, we want to, to so let C be a periodic configuration. A periodic just for simplicity. And so what we would like to do, we would like to somehow not, not only to consider the set of all pairwise distances in C, but also to compute some kind of a like, statistics of these uh, pairwise distances. So, and so we introduce the following function. We say that it's like a two-point correlation function. of C this would be a this would be a radial distribution so mu and for example we can take it in space which is dual to the space of radial Schwartz functions. But we will see that actually it's not just a, a temporal distribution, it's, it's essentially a, a measure. And so we define it in the following, so maybe let's do it in u of c, uh, such that if we apply applying mu to any function, it will ju it gives us uh, the energy of uh, f energy of configuration c. So it's uh, it's certainly a linear. Uh, so th this is a linear functional of uh, our energy profile. And if we assume that uh, f decays fast enough, then it will be also well defined. And so here, just to somehow to, you know, we also want to include uh, zero, which we excluded from uh, computing self-energy of point interaction. So we include uh, zero here. So. And so now this uh, distribution it has a number of uh, nice properties. So. So how can one could uh, think about this uh, uh, correlation function? So it will be like a sum of uh, uh, delta functions at those points which occur as uh, pairwise uh, as distances between two elements in C, and the weight will be somehow it will uh, measure how often this particular distance is met with some nor normalization, so to say. And so what we see that uh, obviously that this uh, distribution is uh, actually a non-negative. Non and also if we somehow this is uh, essentially what we've seen wh while proving the uh, linear programming bound by 
uh, Kohn and Kumar is that uh, the Fourier transform of this distribution, if well defined, I will not somehow address this question like right now, but if we can make sense of its Fourier transform, then it also has to be non-negative. And also what we know, we know that if you restrict this mu is in the like in the neighborhood of uh, zero, we will get just a delta function of zero. And if we take its Fourier transform, then the in the neighborhood of zero, it will look like the density of our configurations times the delta function is zero. And so for example, you can check that all this actually works if uh, mu is a uh, lattice, for example. And so now we see that, uh, like in this third formulation, somehow knowing the complex hull of all such uh, two-point correlation functions, it is uh, equivalent to being able to solve all energy minimization problems. So, But of course, the dif difficulty here is exactly that we don't uh, know, we know very little about this convex hull. Except for these two conditions, it's not that easy to think of any other restrictions, which should be. And so the what's, what is the linear programming method? It is that somehow we are trying to, for example, uh, Found a chalk. So if we have this, for example, set denoted by M, which will depend on D, so this would be the convex hull of all possible configurations. And for example, maybe with fixed density. So it will be some difficult se set we know very little about. And now we know that uh, now this set is it's contained in intersections of, of two other convex sets we actually understand much better. So one of them are all just all positive. Distributions and another are, so to say, positive. So those which have positive or non-negative Fourier transform. And so maybe let's denote it, this intersection of these two cones by L for the linear programming circle. And so now what what so what was so now what the universal optimality property means? So the universal optimality means that our uh, cone here, it has, so to say, a corner point. So this corner point, it sticks out and it becomes a solution to many optimization problems. So now, so now we, if we have universal optimality for some uh, reasonable set of functions, it kind of it's means that we have a corner point of the cone M. 
And so in particular, what it means if, for example, lambda is universally optimal for a cone of functions. For example, we can denote it by S. And in our case, our uh, cone of functions, it was a cone of this completely monotonic functions of square distance, or the cone which was a, which was a linear span of all real Gaussians. And so now we see that lambda is universally optimal if and only if the set M, which I will omit index D here, it's actually it's contained inside of the dual of, of this con S plus the correlation function of lambda. And so here, so here S dual, it will be just the set of all measures nu such that the pairing between nu and f is non-negative for all functions f in the con s. And so the picture we will get here will be like this. So, so we have here our, so this will be the point mu lambda, this will be the cone m. And uh, it has to lie inside of a cone of this uh, mu lambda plus s dual. Uh, of course, everything uh, happens in a infinite dimensional space, so this picture with a corner is somehow, yeah. in infinite dimensional space, this kind of intuition might be quite misleading. Uh, but now, for, so what, what happens for the, li if, uh, some and somehow we, uh, we don't know whether all, all the cones MD, whether they do have such con corners. For example, now we know that such a corner, it would exist, for example, in dimension uh, 8 and 24, but in other dimensions, it could be that we, we simply don't have corners like, like that. So we don't have universally optimal configurations for, at least maybe for not for this uh, natural nice cone of functions which we have selected before. And so another, now, what, is a speci what is special about uh, dimensions uh, 8 and uh, 24, it is that this, uh, uh, the con L, it actually f f for it this uh, point uh, m lambda it also somehow it has to be uh, to lie inside of uh, to, to be between our con it has to lie ex exactly here. So it needs to have exactly the same corner. And in, in this case, we can prove uh, uh, linear uh, universal optimality by linear programming. And so as we uh, somehow num numerical results, maybe I'll speak about it about uh, a bit more tomorrow. So what they suggest is first that like if we go to other dimensions, Usually, we will not have a corner like this. So, so here, indeed, these dimensions. Uh, so, so the situation when M has a corner, at least for our uh, nice set of fa functions, so this is unusual. At the same time, what numerics shows that this con L, it actually it seems like it always has a, has a corner li like this. So. so that 
L has a corner. And th this, th this seems to be a usual situation. So. Is it usually at a two-point correlation function of the lattice, or? No, 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 but like, that's the thing, that con L, it does not, it's not, uh, it just comes from these two conditions of, about the positivity. It's not related to any lattice. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's just like it's some virtual, it will be some virtual distribution which does not correspond to anything. And actually this is the case why sometimes, uh, or even very often, why linear programming fails, or, or the method which we used right here. So it could happen that we are like optimizing, we want to optimize for this con M, but we don't have a nice description of it. So it's very difficult to access it. So what we are doing, we are optimizing over a bigger con L. And so this would be our objective, for example. Oops. And so very often we can find a solution here, which will be optimal solution of this problem inside of L. So but it is not inside M, so it cannot correspond to any to any actual configuration. And for example, this happens if we try to solve a, a, a sphere packing problem in dimension three by the con Elkis linear programming bound. So we can we find, so to say, some parasitic distribution, and uh, uh, we know that somehow the distance from zero is too far, and the weight of this uh, first, uh, so to say, first delta, first non-zero, first delta function, which is not in, at not zero, the weight is too big. And it, for example, contradicts what we know about a possible uh, number of uh, uh, points in a kissing configuration. So we know that such a configuration with, with this particular uh, correlation function cannot exist. By the way, the, the single equations in coding theory are also finite field, having distance, and mm -hmm. and also the Skabatiansky, which state yeah. bounds and so on, they start, and there's also maybe some extremal things like E8 stuff, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know, did you study this? Yes, yeah, so, 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 so I think from... Kind of very nice calls, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, so, so, I f I f so in this case, like linear programming for, for example, for, fin for finite codes, it's, uh, it's not easier to work with it because there you have to work with polynomials. Everything is uh, compact. Every yeah, even yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, there, are, there I think also somehow there are these codes which correspond to Leach lattice and uh, eight lattice, and they are also perfect codes. And I think their uh, optimality is proven by linear programming. And uh, yeah, and also also we know that uh, for example, like Kiki's when it comes to spherical codes, then. Uh, Kissing number in dimension, mm, kissing number problem in dimension uh, eight and twenty-four. It's also solved by linear programming and also solved like uh, ex exactly, unlike in other cases. So it seems like these two lattices they so, so certainly friends with two-point correlations. The maybe like the last thing uh, I I would like to say is that uh, another another special uh, feature of dimensions eight and twenty-four. So it, numerically it seems that in all the dimensions, we were able to find uh, this corner here, at least approximately. We cannot describe it, but it seems like it exists. But uh, in all dimensions except for 1, 2, 8, and 24, uh, usually this distribution is some very transcendental and nasty thing, and we cannot find any nice description of that. And so, like maybe an another second feature it is that like the, so the solution. So it seems nice. So not square root of integers. No, no, no. They're just some, just some real, real numbers. Numbers. Nice. So only if d equals like one, two, eight, or twenty-four. Just so probably. Yeah. No. Of course, one can add some bombastic things. It's 
dimension of super strings is 10, which is 8 plus 2, and for strings is 26, which is 24 plus 2, mm. which is not accidental. So mm. yeah. yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have... Yeah. I still well, have to discover well, 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 what the connect connection is, so I... Those things can happen for very high dimensions? I, we, we have not seen so far. We made some experiments and it, yeah. it seems like actually in, in high dimensions things kind of, they all look the same, they kind of stabilize, no, they're like it's very, sim very similar behavior, like understanding asymptotics is not that uh, easy, but uh, we have not seen, the, uh, we have not seen for example other cases when you have only square roots of integers or some unusual arithmetic behavior, I think. It seems like all the higher dimensions, they all look like each other and they're all transcendental, so to say. <laughs>